Hello people, today we are going to start the first tutorial of management academy. So let's get started. Uh, management accounting, the basic framework is like this. Management accounting and assigning decision making authority. Accounting system help to identify who has the authority over asset. Accounting information supports planning and decision making. An accounting report provides a means of monitoring, evaluating, rewarding, and rewarding performance. Uh, let's compare the difference between the financial accounting and manage, management accounting. I have already spoken in detail about financial accounting in my financial accounting tutorial. So if you want to learn on uh, details about financial accounting and things involved then you can go back to my channel and search for financial accounting playlist so let's see the purpose of financial accounting is to provide information about the financial position and performance of the company whereas for management accounting the purpose is to provide information for planning evaluating and rewarding performance then in case of financial accounting, the types of reports are balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flow. Whereas in case of management accounting, it can be various and non-standard reports. The standard used for financial accounting is GAAP. There is no as such standard used for management accounting. The reporting entity is usually the company taken as a whole for financial accounting and for management accounting a component of company's value chain. The time period is usually a year, quarter or a month for financial accounting. For management accounting it can be any period. Uh, users for financial accounting are investors, creditors and other external parties whereas users for management accounting are management, customers and others in the value chain. Accounting for manufacturing operations. The steps involved in manufacturing process is buy your raw material and buying a raw material will involve direct material cost. Then convert sorry convert raw material into finished goods. In case of finished goods um, uh, the um, cost involved will, will be direct labor and manufacturing overhead cost. And finally, self finished goods. In case of self finished goods, the cost involved will be the cost of goods sold. What are direct materials? So, raw material and component parts that become an integral part of finished products can be traced directly and conveniently to products. If material cannot be traced directly to products, the material are considered indirect and are part of manufacturing overhead. What is direct labor? Direct labor includes payroll cost of direct workers. Direct payroll cost can be calculated as direct labor hours multiplied by wage rate. Who are direct workers? Those employees who work directly on the goods being manufactured. The cost of employee who do not work directly on the goods is considered indirect labor and is part of manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead. All manufacturing costs other than direct materials and direct labor are manufacturing overhead. Includes indirect material, indirect labor, machinery and Equipment cost, cost of regulatory compliances. Does not include selling or <coughs> general administrative expense. So manufacturing over it does not include this. Selling and general administrative expense. Then the cost uh, to produce a unit uh, product includes direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead must be mathematically allocated to each unit of the product using predetermined overhead application rate. 
The cost to produce a unit of product includes direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead. So let's see the difference between product cost and period cost. Product cost is manufacturing cost whereas period cost is operating expense and income taxes. Product cost is incurred in the balance sheet as current asset and inventory. Uh, current asset and inventory and when it is when the goods are sold it is cost of goods sold. Whereas period costs are expenses incurred as expenses in the income statement. Raw materials <coughs> inventory on hand and available for, for use. And finished goods are completed goods awaiting for sale. Work in process are partially completed goods. So you need to remember all these keywords. Raw material inventory on hand and available for use. Finished goods is, as the name says, completed goods. Work in process is partially completed goods. The flow of physical goods. So let's see how it happens. Direct material is purchased. Then it goes to material warehouse. Then direct material is used in the factory to make goods. And the, when the goods are done, then it is called finished goods and finished good goes to the finished goods warehouse and then it is sold to the end customer direct materials are purchased and then the general entry is made in the material inventory and then direct material is used work in process inventory is uh, used for the general entry in case of cost of good manufactured, the finished goods inventory is, is a general entry is made in the finished goods inventory. And once it is sold, then the cost of goods sold uh, general entry is updated. Let's see an example to understand more. Pure Ice Inc. had 52,000 of inventory in direct material inventory for on January 1, 2002. During the year, Pure Ice purchased 586,000 of additional direct materials. At December 31, 2002, 78,000 of direct material are still on hand. How much of direct material was placed into the production during 2002? So we know that at the beginning of year, we have direct material of 52,000. And then 586,000 of additional direct material is um, purchased. So we will add the existing direct material with the additional which is purchased. That means 52,000 of existing material for, uh, plus uh, 586,000 of additional thing which is purchased. And it is saying the ending invent, uh, ending uh, direct material on hand is 78,000. So if we deduct the total of this from this, if we deduct 78,000 from the total of these two, then we will get how much direct material was placed into the production. So let's see how we can do. Beginning material inventory is 52,000 as mentioned, plus material purchased was 586,000 is material um, is the total materials available on hand into the production. Now we have to calculate material placed into the production and we know the ending inventory is 78,000. So if we deduct the material placed into production, we will get the ending inventory or on the other way around, if we deduct the ending inventory from the materials available to be placed in the production, we will get the value of material placed into the production. So 560,000 is the answer. So let's see uh, the following example to understand more. In addition to direct material, Pure Ice incurred 306k of direct labor cost during 2002. Manufacturing overhead, uh, overhead was to, uh, for 2002 was 724k. Pure Ice started 2002 with 132k in work in process. During 2002, units cost 1480k were transferred to the finished goods inventory. What is the ending balance in process, work in process at December 1 to the, December 31st, 2002? So let's see how we can solve it. 
we know that the beginning of inventory um, the beginning work in process is 132000 132000 was work in process in the beginning and then the pro manufacturing cost added 51590 Uh, first we will calculate add all the overhead and direct material and direct uh, overhead cost so first uh, we need to add all the labor cost and manufacturing overhead cost and direct material cost so direct material cost is 306,000 uh, in addition to the direct material PRI's uh, incurred 306k of direct labor cost so 306 is the direct labor cost manufacturing overhead for 724000 and where is the direct material cost direct material cost is from the previous example here 560000 which was placed in the production uh, so 560000 of direct material cost which was put in the uh, production plus the direct labor which was used in the production and manufacturing overhead which was used so adding all three we will get total uh, cost added during the year so this was the total cost 1590000 which we are using here uh, to add with the beginning work and process in entry now uh, total cost in process during the year is adding these two we will get this then minus cost of goods sold completed during the year is 1480k here in the example it is given the during 2002 units costing 1480,000 were transferred to the finished goods inventory so this was the cost of goods sold which is deducted from the total cost and process during the year and the ending inventory will be 242k which is negative so let's do it and this again so you can understand better first what you need to do is calculate the total cost for the material in the production so to, for calculating the total cost we know that we have to add all the three direct material direct labor manufacturing overhead we know that direct material is 560,000 in production direct labor in production and manufacturing after adding all these we have to add this to the work in process inventory to get the total cost for work in uh, cost in process during the year and we, after adding all the cost we have to deduct the cost of goods sold to cost of goods sold are the are the cost which uh, for which the goods are already sold so after we deduct the cost of goods sold from the total cost of the process we will get the ending work in process inventory so this is the cost of ending work in process inventory overhead application rates the overhead application rate expresses an expected relationship between manufacturing overhead cost and some activity base related to the production process overhead application rate is equal to estimated overhead cost divided by estimated units in activity base So oh, estimated overhead cost, overhead cost are estimated based on budget and using mathematical estimation techniques. And in estimated units in activity base, the base is the activity that drives the cost called cost or cost driver. Direct labor hours and machine hours are commonly used as cost drivers. So for estimating estimated units in activity base for calculating this we have to use this uh, technique. The base is the activity that drives and the, the cost called cost driver. So it can be direct labor hours or machine hours also called cost drivers. So let's see an example to understand overhead application rates. Big T company produces engines for big trucks. Total overhead for 2002 is estimated to be 2600k. Big, big T applies overhead based on the machine hours. Big T estimates machine hours for 2002 to be 160 to 500 hours. 
compute big T's predetermined overhead rate for 2002. So as we know the overhead application rate is equal to estimated overhead cost divided by estimated units in activity base. So putting the values we will get the answer. So how we will put the values? Let's see. We know that the total overhead for 2002 is estimated to be 2600k and we know the machine hours. Machine hours is the cost driver which is 162500. 162,500. So by putting the uh, values in the formula, here we know that estimated overhead cost is 2600k and estimated units in activity base is machine hours. Here, machine hours is 162,500. We'll get the value of overhead application rate, which is $16 per hour. Some machine in some companies use different cost drivers for different manufacturing activities, a process called activity based costing. A schedule determining the cost of finished goods manufactured. A schedule of cost of finished goods manufactured is prepared to assist managers in understanding and evaluating the overall cost of manufacturing products. So let's see an example to understand um, how to calculate cost of goods sold to be added to the income statement. So here is the management accounting report which mentions the work in process inventory beginning of 30,000. Then manufacturing cost assigned to production that is direct labor material cost of 150,000, direct labor of 300,000, manufacturing overhead of 360,000. When, we, when you add these th three, then you get the total manufacturing cost of 810,000. And then when you add 800 plus 30,000, you get the total cost of work in process during the year, which is 840,000. And then what you need to do is, you need to deduct uh, work in process inventory at the end of the year, which is 40,000. When you deduct it, you get the cost of finished goods manufactured. So total cost of finished goods manufactured in this current year is 800,000. Now what you need to do to calculate cost of goods sold? First you need to find what was the beginning uh, inventory of the finished goods. Let's say it's 150,000. Then what you need to add? Add the cost of finished goods manufactured during this year. Where we already calculated in the past balance sheet mm, 800,000. So 800,000 uh, we calculated uh, the cost of finished goods manufactured during the current year. We add that to the uh, to the beginning inventory of the finished goods and we get the total cost of finished goods available for sale for this particular year. Now to calculate the goods uh, cost of goods sold you just need to deduct the finished goods which are not sold and which are still in the inventory to get the current cost of goods sold. So let's see. Let's suppose the ending finished good inventory at cost of one sixty-eight thousand. So when we deduct it from the cost of finished goods available for sale, we'll get the cost of goods sold for this year. So this is the amount seven eighty-two thousand is the cost of goods goods sold for the particular period. So here we do the entry in the income statement. The sales of thirteen hundred thousand. Then the deduct cost of goods sold to get the profit on the gross profit on the sales. Then operating expenses is deducted. Then income from operations. We get income from operations. Then we deduct the interest expense. Then income before taxes. Then we deduct income tax expense to get the net income. So this is how we uh, do entry of cost of goods sold in the income statement as we learnt in the financial accounting tutorial. So guys I hope you got some idea on management accounting big um, reports and how to calculate the total cost direct labor, um, direct labor, direct material and uh, manufacturing overhead costs. So come back to my channel and subscribe to my channel to for watching more videos on accounting and other things. Thank you very much for watching.